What I'm seeing a lot, um, particularly with my 10-year-old's team, is body position. So one of the things, you know, they, they talked about uh, their body position, but you need to stay in it throughout the duration of the point, and especially young kids from my evaluation of watching my children and then videotaping and then scrutinizing them at home. I'm totally that parent. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but making sure that they are in this position at all times, because what Hayden does is she's standing up when the ball's on the other side. And again, those are easy things for a kid that, you know, is still growing into their body, is understanding that that body position has to be here the whole time so that they can then make that easy play. And at the lower level, for little kids, that easy play is the first ball that comes over. At the higher level, it's a set or dump or a tip. Maybe I've transitioned back defensively and I'm ready for that hard dig, but what am I doing off that ball when they tip? Is my body doing this or is, am I waiting and reacting and then coming forward? So, you know, ideas of putting, um, you know, the stand, put a knee pad on their back or things along those lines so that they are staying in that flat back position for the duration of a point or duration of, you know, that can be partner drills, things along those lines. Um, a couple other things uh, that we really key on is the platform staying together. Um, as I started to watch more volleyball, the high level, uh, and again, there's going to be times, but as, as they're in that defensive play, if they're rolling, if they're sprawling correctly, they should be low, right? So if they're making contact up here and then going to the ground, they're going to get hurt. And everyone has a kid in their gym that does that. Yeah, we do too. Um, but so ideally, they are, they are approaching and getting that ball in a low level. And then what we have in our gym is a lot of kids that their arms break apart because they try to catch themselves. So really trying to lock into keeping that platform together. And you guys were doing it really well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a muscle. But you, can you guys demonstrate sprawling out and making sure you're getting it low and that platform staying together all the way through? Okay, so see how they're pushing out, and a lot of kids want to naturally break that. And I think what that leads to is the ball shanking, because those arms are breaking and the ball is spraying a little bit. Um, the other thing that I'll hit on real quick is pushing off the leg. So we'll do a lot of drills, and I was never a hitter to start with, so... We'll see how this goes, but I'm not going to hit at him because I know I'd embarrass myself. But let's have someone in middle back. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do a lot of just muscle memory stuff here. So I'm going to have her push right so she knows where I'm going to go. All I'm going to do, and you saw this with Russ. Russ, half his balls were just balls that he tossed in. So if, if you aren't a great hitter, there's still a lot of effective ways to initiate balls. So I'm going to have her push to the right, but what I want her to lock into is covering ground. And so she's going to push off that left foot to be able to cover ground. So instead of just falling to the ball, she's got to cover and then now, and now I'll uh, cover some rain. Okay? Thanks, guys. Push, come on. Good. Go. Good. Okay, now we're going to go to the left. And again, this can be, you could go five fast and they're getting back up, and now it's all muscle memory. Push, come on. Good, that's a good push. Come on. Go, go. Good. Got her in the head. Oh, and see, that, that's the tough one I caught. So, Again, trying a good job with that. So again, trying to create that muscle memory so now then when they're going in, and that's, a, that's going to be a slower attack to drill, you know, if it's, or a ball, that if it's coming with tons of velocity, you're not going to be able to have quite as much range, um, you know, in some scenarios. But on a slow ball, or a little bit more, you know, maybe a 75% hit ball, you can cover a lot of area um, and doing things like that. So, and then the last thing, my favorite story, my, uh, the, I think, and you, Russ, you kind of talked about this, staying on your feet is so critical. So drills like taking off knee pads or, you know, we'll do some six on six that they can't hit the ground, or if they do, if they hit, like one drill we like is if they hit the ground, they can't win the point. They can wash it, so they still want to continue to win the rally, but they can't actually earn a point in that scenario. Because what we see is players, you know, just dropping to the ground, and they can cover so much more ground if they're staying on their feet. And absolutely, there's times to go to the ground, but I'm seeing this with my daughter right now. So she, she loves the pancake, right? 
It's the worst. Now, I mean, really, not that you're never going to use it, but it should be the absolute last resort. And what I see is her being rewarded by lots of praise when she used a pancake, when she literally could have stayed on her feet. It wasn't even a ball that she needed to go to the ground. So, um, so again, making the easy play 